Hey there. In this video we are going to look at special triangles. Now you might think that all triangles are special, but there are two triangles that are kind of extra special. The angles in them are very common angles and the ratio of sides is simple enough that you can use it to come up with simple exact values for trig ratios. Now you might look and say, what is this guy talking about? Those things aren't even both triangles. What we're going to look at though is creating two special triangles. The first one of which is half a square, cut diagonally like that. So we're talking about this triangle right here. Now the angles in that when you cut it in half are 45, since the original angles were 90. So this is often called a 45, 45, 90 triangle. If we imagine the sides are 1, then we can work out what that diagonal has to be. We call it x and use the Pythagorean relation. We get that that side has a length of square root of 2. So we're going to label it root 2. So then this triangle is also referred to sometimes as a 1, 1, root 2 triangle. The other special triangle comes from half an equilateral triangle. Cut vertically like that. Now the angles in an equilateral triangle are 60, and then that's 90, which leaves 30 for that if it's bisected equally. So this triangle here is our other special triangle, and it is called a 30-60-90 triangle because of the angles involved there. Now, if we imagine that the sides of that original equilateral triangle are 2, the reason we do that is because then when you cut it in half, that one can be 1, and then we can work out that third side the same way we did before with the Pythagorean relation. We'll call it x again. This time we're finding a shorter side, so we're subtracting there. 2 squared minus 1 squared. So we get that that side is square root of 3. So we can label it. And then that triangle is often referred to also as a 1 root 3 2 triangle. Now at first, sometimes people feel like they want to call it a 1, 2, root 3 triangle, just because it kind of matches the way the other one is named with the root at the end. The problem is you end up mixing up those two things and labeling the triangle wrong. You want to have that 2 as the largest side. What we're going to do now is use those two special triangles to write some exact trig ratios for those three common angles. So, for example, for 45 degrees, we're going to try and write the 3. We're going to use that first of the two special triangles with the 45 degree angle, 1, 1, root 2. So let's do sine 45 first. If you look from the 45 degree angle, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so you have a ratio of 1 over root 2. That's an exact ratio. Maybe not what you're used to, going to the calculator and punching in sine 45 and seeing what decimal it gives you, it's exactly equal to 1 over root 2. If we go to the calculator and you go sine of 45, you get that decimal. It shows 10 digits, but it continues on past what you see. If you do 1 over square root of 2, it's exactly the same as that. It's just a different way of coming up with that trig ratio from a known triangle rather than your calculator. 1 over root 2 is an exact ratio. That 0 0.707, whatever it was, is an approximate decimal ratio. Let's do another one now. Cos 45. From the same triangle, you look from the 45, adjacent over hypotenuse is 1 over root 2. It's the same thing. 45 degrees has the same sine and cosine. If we do the tangent of 45, from that 45, 1 over 1, is a ratio of 1. Now you might write 1 over 1, but that's not as simple, so let's just leave it at 1. If we're going to do some of these other ones, like sine of 30, we need the other special triangle. We're going to write it like that, and put that 30 degree angle down there, label the sides. That 1 is across from the 30, the smallest side, and 2 and root 3. 2 is the hypotenuse. So from the 30 degree angle, opposite over hypotenuse is 1 over 2 for sine of 30. If we want cosine of 30, we're going to still look from that 30, but we're looking at the adjacent root 3 over 2, root 3 over 2. And then tangent of 30, 
we look from that same angle, opposite 1 over adjacent root 3 for 1 over root 3. We're going to use that same triangle to do 60 degrees, except we're going to draw it upright like this, so the 60 is down there. It's a little easier to think about. The 1 is on the bottom this side, and the root 3 is across from the 60. Choose the hypotenuse. So if we want sine of 60, opposite over hypotenuse, root 3 over 2. If we look at cosine of 60, we've got adjacent from the 60 is 1, hypotenuse is 2, so we have 1 over 2. And lastly, tangent of 60, we have root 3 over 1, so we're just going to write root 3. You don't want to write root 3 over 1, it's simpler to write root 3. Now one last thing we're going to look at here is a few of these you can simplify. These two and this one have square roots on the bottom. And what you can do is, for this one, say, you can multiply by root 2 over root 2, so that on the top you have root 2, but on the bottom you have 2, which is not a square root anymore. Sometimes it's better to have fractions that do not have roots on the bottom. Similarly, for this one, 1 over root 3, you could multiply by root 3 over root 3. It doesn't change the value, just makes it root 3 over 3. No square root in the bottom. It's not required, but it's worth knowing that those are equivalent ratios. So, this has been looking at special triangles and how you can use them to write exact values for trig ratios. Mm -hmm.